Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel Ebasert, what's it doing now? Um, just want to talk to you today as part of the uh, safety corner part of the channel uh, about an event which happened uh, recently uh, concerning an A320 that flew an RMP approach uh, into 26 Wright Paris Charles de Gaulle that almost ended up in a, um, a CFIT uh, incident. That's controlled flight uh, into terrain where the aircraft almost landed uh, short of the runway. Uh, this was all down to the fact that the uh, wrong Q&H uh, was set for the approach. And I want to cover this because I uh, just want to get uh, a real sort of clear understanding of, of just how this came about and just how difficult it is to see and uh, monitor a, an error that's uh, a Q&H error bearing in mind that this approach is flown uh, purely from the aircraft's perspective based on the barometric uh, pressure that is set by the crew. Um, so you can read this report, uh, which has been filed by the BEA, which is the uh, French authorities that have released their preliminary investigation. You can just Google that and uh, you can uh, read the preliminary report. And I've taken a few snapshots uh, from their report as part of um, some uh, PowerPoint briefing and some presentations which I'll uh, bring up uh, on the approach here. So just to start with a broad uh, overview, um, I don't think we need to mention airlines and like always, with this uh, safety corner part of the channel there is uh, no assessment of the crew we don't know the full picture uh, and why, why I like to do this is really so that we can all learn uh, a little bit more understand things a bit better from other crews experiences so that we are better placed to avoid making the same or uh, similar errors um, so broad overview on this the aircraft flies an RMP approach uh, the correct uh, airfield data is obtained by the crew the ATC then reads uh, the latest Q&H incorrectly the crew then set uh, the incorrect Q&H uh, of a higher uh, pressure setting than actual uh, the aircraft set this in the air the, so the crew set this into the aircraft's FCU and the aircraft then flies an RMP approach based on that uh, barrow setting why is it important for the correct barrow setting well remember um, for an RMP approach the aircraft is flown from the air or the, the approach is flown from the aircraft's perspective there is no ground aids uh, like an ILS for example for the aircraft to sort of grab onto uh, and then fly the correct trajectory the trajectory is set by what's in the FMGC and the barrow reference the aircraft will fly an altitude to that barometric uh, reference so just looking having a look at uh, a couple of the slides here um, ultimately what happened is the aircraft was flown at the incorrect uh, barrow setting the approach was flown the difference between the correct and the uh, incorrect uh, Q&H between 1001 and 1011 is obviously 10 millibar and in ISA that's approximately 300 feet um, uh, so the aircraft was essentially flying 300 feet lower than the prescribed profile uh, barrow um, and when you have a look at the LNAV VNAV minima for 26 right you'll notice that you're only 370 feet uh, above the ground so when the crew initiated a go around because they weren't visual with the runway um, as the report uh, uh, shows and states that the gear uh, missed uh, the obstacle or the ground or the ground clearance uh, by I think less than 10 feet so um, a very near miss so let's have a look and uh, and see what we mean and, and, and why it's really important to have the correct barrow setting and why it's very difficult to pick up these errors um, when it's incorrectly set so I've got a couple of uh, PDFs up here, which uh, which I'll bring. So the first one I'm going to show you uh, is an extract from the BEA report, and it shows uh, the various trajectories, which is the actual descent profile. It shows the terrain data in green there at the bottom, and it also shows the barometric altitude of the airplane corrected for Q and H. 
and the correct path that uh, should have been flown. So you can see the correct path at the top and the actual descent of the airplane in the blue line. And what I've added on the left hand side here is the Met Q&H of 1001 and the Cruise Q&H set of 1011. Now, just to have a bit of context to this, um, if you're if you're just struggling to understand why um, the aircraft got so low, you just need to visualize where 1001 is and where 1011 is being sort of below ground, if you like, of a higher pressure setting um, so that that reads that the altimeter is obviously going to overread. All the aircraft is going to do is fly the profile based on the barrow setting. So the aircraft did what it believed was right. It flew the platform altitude of 5,000 feet based on 1011, which was about 4,700 feet, let's say, in actual real terms. Uh, and then at the Fox Gulf 27 right, it commenced its descent. The reality is, as you can see here from the profile provided from uh, BEA, is that it followed a profile below the actual prescribed uh, trajectory. And you'll see here at the blue line as the aircraft then uh, commenced its go around, only a few feet there above um, uh, the actual terrain, uh, well short of uh, runway 27 right. So I'll just give you a, a moment just to have a, a look at that. Uh, there's a note here about an MSAW warning, which is uh, goes off in the tower. That was alerted to the air traffic controller, uh, the ATCO at the time, to an aircraft that was... Um, not quite the terminology here that was too steep a descent or wasn't on the correct trajectory. Um, you can see when the lowest point of where Togo was applied for the go around and uh, uh, you'll see then the trajectory uh, for the actual go around that was performed. The aircraft then came round. It still had this, the same Q&H set and then um, the aircraft then commenced a subsequent approach again with the incorrect Q&H set and of course uh, this time though however they were able to see the runway much sooner and then with the visual perspective were able to then correct uh, their uh, tra uh, trajectory. Um, so the next slide I'm going to show you here is an extract uh, from the AIP and it shows the RMP approach with the uh, LNAV VNAV minima and uh, the profile. So what I've done for you here is just to sort of explain to you um, a little bit more uh, pictorially what the aircraft actually did based on what it was supposed to be doing or the trajectory that it was supposed to fly. At the top here you've got 5,000 feet on 1001 which was the correct QNH on the ATIS and then the 5,000 feet 1011. The aeroplane just thinks that it's flying at 5,000 feet based on the barrow that is set on the uh, FCU. The crew would have set this when they were cleared uh, to an altitude. The aircraft then flies a platform altitude of 5,000 feet based on that barrow and then commences its descent at the Fox Gulf 27 right. And you can see here the red line uh, trajectory of the aircraft flying below profile. And right at the end of that profile, obviously, is where the aircraft would have commenced to go around because it wasn't visual. And that's where the, um, the aircraft nearly uh, um, collided with the ground short, uh, of the, uh, short of the runway. So look, why can't we see this then? Why is it that when we look at the height checks uh, along the uh, approach path that the aircraft would have appeared to be flying on the correct trajectory. Well, like I said earlier on, there's nothing from the ground and ground-based aids to uh, manage or to monitor the profile and for the aircraft to fly down a beam. It is a beam that is in the FMGC based on barrow only. So if that barrow is incorrect, then the profile is going to be incorrect. This is why it's really important to make sure that we set the right uh, Q&H. When you look at the height checks along the profile, it will be correct because it's based on an incorrect barrow data. If, if, at, if at seven miles, the aircraft's at four and a half thousand feet, for example, well, that's what it's going to fly. But of course, it's based on 1011, not on 1001. So critically, the aircraft is just lower to the actual terrain floor, uh, but just flying above that barrow reference. And that, that's the critical thing to take away from this. 
is that it's very difficult to pick this up. Now, they had a 10 millibar difference here, which was 300 feet, which is quite significant. And perhaps if the if the crew had greater situational awareness um, and the radio altimeter might have given something away for them and that, that, that they would have had the 2,500 feet call earlier than perhaps they were expecting. But let's be honest, 300 feet when we're looking at what happened here was quite critical, but at sort of 5,000 feet and two and a half thousand feet, you know, with the workload that's going on there with an approach that perhaps they might not have flown before, you can imagine that this might have been overlooked and perhaps wasn't a, an early enough warning for them together, maybe even with the uh, thousand feet and perhaps the 500 foot radio altimeter call, all happening perhaps earlier than they might have uh, might have expected. But otherwise, there really isn't anything to pick to pick up on it. So guys, in closing here, um, I just wanted to sort of bring this up. I, I don't want to go into a, a huge amount of detail here, but there's a number of questions here that crew have asked when discussing this is that how can the height checks be the same? We just remember that it's going to fly above that barrow and you can set whatever you like in the FCU there. It will fly that approach path based on that barrow and those altitude or height or altitude height uh, altitude checks will be consistent uh, and it will fly it at whatever you set so uh, hopefully you've got something from this guy just a short video here uh, just to explain why the correct q and h is really important why we won't see it there uh, or why we won't see any errors or be alerted to any discrepancies because the aircraft will just fly the barrow that you've set uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, fortunately, this crew got away with it uh, with an initial go around because they weren't visual, but they got very close to the ground. And the subsequent approach, they were able to visually um, uh, sort of amend their profile in order to carry out a, uh, a visual landing. But uh, certainly a highlight there of uh, why it's important to set uh, the correct uh, data. Thanks very much for watching. Keep the plate spinning. Stay safe. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on another, another episode in the near future. Thanks very much indeed.